All right, everybody, welcome back to the show. Uh, hopefully, I'm not too far off on time. I did uh, kind of screw things up a little bit. Uh, got a little rushed. <clears throat> However, are back in Microsoft Flight. Hopefully, they just released an update, and I'm hoping that it doesn't like crash horribly. Uh, if it does, then I'm not sure what we're going to do. We may have to jump into X-Plane because it's just more stable for me. I know that there are some people who are having the opposite experience. That's not me, not today. Um, so today we are flying from, um, I want to say it's uh, Fukuoka. Yeah, Fukuoka to uh, Tokyo Haneda. Uh, so we are flying in Japan. This is our first time actually flying in Japan uh, since the Japan update for Microsoft Flight, mostly just because the, the sim just hasn't been able. And I've seen horrible things about what happened with Smart Cam. So hopefully they've got some of that fixed with the recent updates. Uh, also, you may have noticed we have grabbed the livery mega pack and we are flying um, all Nippon Airlines. Uh, this is a real-world flight that actually happens in a uh, A320. Uh, so it's actually the exact plane and flight that we're making. I think the route is actually correct as well. Um, of course, minus the 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 uh, hidden star uh, because I don't have ATC to give those to me. Let's say we actually get this started, huh? So let me the cockpit. We're gonna get surprised by what is and isn't working. Over to you guys are work this out. Get this plane started. Alright, so let's start out with batteries one and two coming on. Ooh, that's neat. Are those just kind of faded in instead of immediately becoming on? Okay, that's still in op. Well, all right, external power is on. Fuel pumps are all off. Now we get to load our fuel and cargo. Okay, so this is in liters. Ah, <sighs> Microsoft. Let me let me let you know something here. Ah, no, wait here. here we are here. We are. Ag. Oh, ho, ho. now we know what we're doing. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, you know what we're doing. Okay, so let's load. Um, we need a total of 7263. So uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and empty these outers. We should need 3630 in each. What are you doing? Plane. 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 Stop. Oh my god. It is such a pain in the ass. <laughs> okay. I'm just going to look down here at the bottom. And, we, and we're going to look for a target of 7260. Thirty-four percent. Come on. Oh, not thirty-five. Thirty-three. No, nope. looks like we are gonna have to go with thirty-five. What? Can I? Can, oh wait, can I? Can I just? Like if I need, uh, be the six. No, I cannot. And that was a from Evie. Thank you so much. Pick a battle. Right, right. Yes. This started. Sorry about that. Um, didn't see quite in yet. 
let's go ahead and get Stream Raider started. Uh, we're going to be in the special event going on today. Not sure how much longer it's going to be. Oh, and it needs me to update. Thank you so much for not having this ready to go. Just install. I'm streaming. Come on, you updated in the middle of me streaming? <clears throat> All right, uh, so now as far as payload, there's payload, we need eighteen point. What are you doing, plane? You keep going to 60.1%. Oh. You know what? Close enough. Close enough. That's what we're going to go with. All right, finish and spelling. Thank you. Goku keeps yelling. Gracias, Google. <laughs> it's fucking killing me. <laughs> it would be too, man. I mean, that's that's... You gotta laugh at it, because if you don't laugh, you're gonna cry. Come on! Dream Raiders! Yes, you finished reinstalling. Now can can you automatically start the damn thing? Not hard to figure out. Hmm. <clears throat> All right, here we go. Start with this undead ambush. I'm gonna put myself a top left. Feel free to place yourselves wherever you like, and hopefully we'll get a victory out of it. All right, so next thing up is the APU fire test, which is an operative. Right? Uh, APU master on. There you go. I uh, wait for flap open. This should automatically switch to the AP page, but it's inoperative. Uh, Well, um, <laughs> fly by wire, guys, you had that working. I'm, I'm fairly sure you had that working. The rest of this all looks pretty well set up. By now it should be done doing the preliminary tests, so I'm gonna hit the start button. Oh boy. <laughs> Alright, flap lever should be at zero. Speed brakes retracted. From window heat not in AP on once available. Since I can't see what's going on with the APU. I'm just going to have to guess when it's running well enough, probably by that. Shouldn't have started that fast. Gone. 
Air conditioning panel, no white. Do not like the way this. Ah! Okay. Cross bleed should be set to auto. Air conditioner temp, we're not going to worry about. Generator 1 and 2. Fault lights are on. External power can come off. Off. Electrical panel, all other lights off. Ventilation panel, all lights off. Now we're on to pre-flight procedure. Into a line or a deers, which are inoperative. Ah, okay. Strobe light to auto. Um, wing light on, nav and logo on. Belts are an operative. Uh, why is everything broken still? There's very little to actually do. Make a little sound when I toggle the switch. Landing elevation. Should be. Ah! That to auto. Pack flow as required. Fine. On normal. Dual pumps can all come on if I can get the damn thing to turn. And this thing is sluggish, ladies and gentlemen. Not explain why, but it is heckin' sluggish. Alright. Engine 1 and 2 fire test, that's gonna be an operative as well. Radios are already on. McDo. McDo should be mostly set. Uh, let's see here. It. Cost index is going to be five. It's operative. <laughs> oh, okay. Alright, so let's go to flight plan. Should have everything already plugged in. Because I used the, uh, I used the actual in-game Thing. I, I can't say that I'm proud of that, but it's the only way to do this reasonably. Um, the McDo is just so broken. Just not much about it. Um, Alright, so init B. Okay. Go back to our weight and balance. Okay, so our zero fuel weight. Ah, uh, gonna be forty fifty eight point three. And our center of gravity is an excellent question. Uh, it doesn't give me the ability to actually determine that. So we're just going to say 30%. Uh, block fuel is going to be... 7. I don't know why it's not calculating any of this stuff. It should be. Uh, okay. Performance apps gonna be one down zero, I guess. We don't have anything here to actually it could run the calculation. Uh we're gonna flex I'm just gonna go with all this. We'll figure the rest out later. Um, I'll start doing this more reliably when the simulator is actually working more reliably. Uh, okay, so... Progress... Point two. RT... A. Okay. Very particular, and you're not working... 
Right, fair enough. Well, that's the McDo configured. Push back and start Altim. Should be that or whatever the weather is. Let's see what that is. Altimeter and thirteen megapat. Hectopat. Why are we at standard? <laughs> I feel like this is definitely not live weather. Okay, flight directors both on. FCU speed and heading should be dashed. We're gonna set this all the way up to our altitude. For today, that cruise altitude is gonna be Flight level 350, that's 35,000 feet. Which, I didn't plug that in. Oh, I did, okay. Heading, altitude, into skid and nose wheel steering is on. It automatically set the trick to max. Ah, this thing is doing things for me and I don't like it. Switching panel is all normal transponder. We're gonna, if I can make it move, is set to go zero, as though we were flying far. Set it to auto. Gonna set our beacon on and we're going to request pushback. Wanna go look at our live map? We're basically gonna straight back. I think it's control shift P. I think it's control shift P. I might be wrong. Things are moving, but the, not getting a pushback. truck push me back why is the push cart not pushing me back what are you even yo what's going on oh microsoft wait okay that looks like a push cart that's definitely a push just shift p that's going I'm gonna go ahead and turn the ignition and start engine two starting to push yet why is the light showing through and remove our parking brake let it push a bit percent and one All right starting engine one
try and stop this pushback. Hey! Is that our parking brake? Hope that he disconnects and goes away. Oh, perfect. It's finally doing things that I wanted to do. I still can't make it turn or anything. All right. Engine start. One. <clears throat> Once that finishes, and switch it over to normal engine mode. Now our timer here is going to be totally wrong because I still can't turn it on or off yet. And uh, I did boot up the simulator two hours ago. <clears throat> okay, so that's both engines at idle. Engine mode selector to normal APU. Coming off. Found spoilers armed. Flap set for takeoff. Pitch trim is fine. Engine and wing anti ice is not needed. APU master off. We're going to set our nose wheel light to taxi. Remove our parking brake. And we get to put our hand, our feet on our rudder pedals. Let's get this baby rolling. And we are up in record time for Microsoft Flight. Although that could be in part because uh, we did our flight planning in the simulator rather than doing it the way that we should be doing it. It's taken me a little bit to get used to these rudder pedals. Are you why are you stopped? Roll. I don't know how much of this is me being unfamiliar with the pedals, how much of it is Microsoft just doing weird things, because <laughs> nobody has ever claimed that Microsoft does not do weird Really don't feel like the pillar for an A320 is going to be quite this sensitive. I also don't think it's going to require 50% thrust to get myself moving faster than, you know, 10 knots. 
Mm. I feel like we're getting a little bit of jerky jerky stop motion here. And I don't like that. Does not feel like a very good frame rate. Maybe that'll change as we get into the air. Okay. Got our park brake and get things prepared. Alright, brakes are checked, flight controls check. Um FMA, Nav and Climb, well SRS now because we're on this runway. I don't think it's supposed to do that quite yet. Auto brake is set max. Uh terrain on N D go ahead and turn. No big deal, no big deal. Uh, call purser. Probably not working. Gonna real quick for the volume here, real quick, so that maybe I'm a little easier to understand. Uh, EM no blue. Take off. Heck is inoperative, All right? Or takeoff, transponder, into mode C, T-A-R-A, up, engine mode as required, runway turnoff lights on, we're going to turn all our lights on to the maximum. All right. Now that's inoperative, so... <laughs> Nothing going on there. Let's get our rudder pedals going. And release parking brake. Release the damn parking brake. Let's throttle up to about 50%. Stabilize. Great gear up. Turn on autopilot. Flaps clean. Throttle into climb to tent. spoiler can be disarmed ah uh, frame rates frame rates are very strange right now and I don't like it all right autopilot one is on we can go ahead and turn our runway turn offs off nose wheel lights off if you want is on 
Battles in the climb to tent. Flaps are retracted. Anti ice is not necessary. Ending lights come off at 10,000 feet. Okay, this looks like a much better intercept than I'm used to it doing. I'm used to it just kind of trying to turn me into a 90 degree intercept and then oscillating back and forth. Um, it doesn't seem to be doing that just yet, but it, it also could very easily throw me into alpha floor. It hasn't yet, but I'm not putting it past it. It is a Sobo. I have seen the horror story. And I trust nothing. We've got quite a few it's placed. Starting that fight in about six and a half minutes. Why why aren't we going all the way up? There's some sort of a climb restriction. some reason the plane just does not want to climb right not sure why maybe because we're no because we're not crossing 10,000 feet it also should not be accelerating past 250 knots plane plane what are you doing you're violating the law plane you're not supposed to do that But that's all right. Uh, it's, you know, it's a simulator. It's not the real thing. Uh, we're not going to get an actual deviation. Uh, that should go back to status monitoring. But uh, let's see. Who's? No, they don't. Uh, okay. Uh, let's Pressure's not working. Nothing's working. I feel like something didn't get copied properly for the A32NX. I feel like it's not working properly. You know what? That's okay. Uh, we're through 10,000 feet. And bring our landing lights off. I would normally release the passengers, but it won't let me do that. You're all stuck in your seats. I apologize for that, but uh, you don't get a choice because I don't get a choice. So it looks like we're all stuck in our seats until for the duration of the flight. Um, so my impressions so far of this new update it does seem to be the, the the autopilot seems to be a little better i will give it that i'm still climbing at 4,300 feet per minute and that's a, a that's a bit aggressive um i mean it's not totally impossible um but i definitely would not that as a matter of course right um is back. See you guys right there. So, I think it's it's doing better uh, than it has been. Um, stability is still a question. I'm not sure. I haven't flown it enough recently to be able to tell, especially since the update dropped this morning. Um, I can't be sure. But it does seem, seems to have some performance issues that I don't like. Uh, I still don't like the camera system. I doubt that's ever going to change. Uh, camera? Um, 
Hold on. Okay, we're supposed to be turning. I've had that, for some reason, stop controlling the drone and start controlling the airplane before. I didn't want that to happen again. <laughs> um. Hmm. Oh. Silence. Gain's an operative. Hilt's an operative. Everything's an operative, but... Okay. Well, we're just gonna stick around in the cockpit. I don't want to risk, you know, rolling this bitch. I don't know. Let's give it a shot. What's the worst thing that happens? We crash? Oh, well. Set position. There we go. That's position like that. This pocket, nothing. Up. <clears throat> okay, there, there we go. Okay, okay. Now I'm getting a little bit of a hang of this. Okay. There, there we go. Okay, there's elevation. In that way. Okay, now now we're getting somewhere. Now we're getting somewhere. Down. Perfect. We're just gonna take a few screenshots. Throw on stream readers. All right, let's start. Boom! Here we go. Oh yeah, yeah. There's not nearly as many people as I thought there was going to be. Guys, get all the coins you can, and we're, like Ibby got an archer. Like the few cards. All right. The way. And then I'm gonna hide that. Uh, we can act. Not that I'm ever going to actually use the flag bearer. <laughs> Let's try again. Oh, no, 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 bad. No, actually, that's not, not what I wanted.
does make some beautiful screenshots. I do wish they would model the interior properly. That's never going to happen. Okay, I'm actually getting the hang of this camera system. It's not that bad. I do wish there was a way to slow it down, though. Nope, nope. That's not what I meant to do. Say Star Alliance. I think it's a part of Star Alliance. Maybe it is. I don't know. It definitely does not seem to be very high quality. Or made this. They have a lot of jagged. Uh oh. Uh, let's uh, cockpit. I'm sure, we're just hitting our cruise altitude. Yeah, we're just hitting cruise. Oh, this is probably pressure. That's actually the 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 camera is getting a lot better. Um, rolling it was pretty intuitive there. Once I start out, uh, sure. Uh, question for me: You need a bit of advice? Shoot, I'm I'm here to help. At least if I can. I'm obviously I'm not a professional pilot. I'm definitely a simulator pilot. I've only been doing it for a couple of years. I'm not the best, but if I can help, I'm happy to do so. Sorry about that squeak. I have to uh, grab some water. Uh, also, if anyone's curious, the music here is licensed. I do have a sync license for it. Uh, this is through Stream Beats, uh, which is a free service. You can use it in YouTube videos, I think Facebook, Twitter, and Twitch. I'm looking around for other things that are. If I'm flying the A320 fly by wire and cannot make a smooth autopilot landing, it's great. And land and plan makes it. The plane makes at least ops. Any suggestion? Well, unfortunately, I don't think there's a lot that fly by wire can do about that right at this moment. Um, they are limited by the licensing agreements uh, that, that Asobo puts on everybody. So they can't really touch the autopilot much. Uh, so that may just be uh, a Sobo. Um, I have, however, seen some pretty smooth landings. You may check to see to make sure that the airport that you're landing at has Category 3 ILS. Uh, if they don't, it's going to have a rough time because in the real world it would have a rough time. Um, Autopilot landings are meant to only be on category. It, it, an autopilot landing is a category three ILS landing. Flying into O'Hare. Uh, let me make sure if all their runways category three. Or D. I think everything's category three.
Okay, I think everything there has a category 3 ILS. That may, or right? Left? It looks like 4 right and left not have category. Everything else. And 4 left and 2. So, 4 left and 4 right. You do left and 2 right. Do not have category 3. All the rest do. Um. So what I would wonder is if you are fully configured, you're on 2-8 left. Okay. 7 left. Okay, so you should be fine. Um, going on with this oscillation. That is a really bad oscillation if introduced. Um, this is new since the update. It didn't used to do this. Oh my god, this is really bad. Um, so what I would guess, um, if you are, if you have your flaps fully in, uh, so you're at flaps full, your, um, speed brakes are armed and they should deploy naturally. Um, the only thing I can think is that it doesn't flare on its own, um, so if you at about 30 feet if you cut power and just pull back the 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 sticks very slightly then it should arrest some of that porpoising that's what it's called uh, because it's basically what's either happening is you're landing on your nose wheels and so it starts the the it, it basically slams the back end of the plane down and then that lifts the nose, which makes you go up again and you start bouncing. It's called porpoising. Um, or you're just hitting so hard on the mains that you're bouncing up. But I think if you hit that hard on the mains in MFS, if you have rea if you have realism turned on, then it'll probably crumple your, your mains and um, it'll, it'll mark you as crashed. But what I'm guessing is you're probably landing on your nose wheel. Uh, because you need to flare. So, uh, the next time that you're landing with your auto land, uh, I know you shouldn't have to do this because category three should do a slight flare on its own. But at the very last second before you start hitting the ground, just pull your stick back ever so slightly, uh, get the nose up a couple degrees just to make sure you're landing that you're landing on the mains and you shouldn't bounce. Um, now, Microsoft Flight has some questionable, um, how to put it, they have some questionable physics. You need to turn off the AP, no. Um, so during, during a Category 3 ILS, it, the Airbus basically is there to help you. It's fly-by wire, which means that you tell it what you want to do and it does its best to do it. Um, so it's not like you pull on a on a yoke and it's mechanically moving the elevators and ailerons. Um, I will give me just a minute. I'm I'm trying to answer some questions. <laughs> um, so when you pull back on the on on the stick, it should disconnect the autopilot. If like if I did that right now, if I pulled back on my stick, you would hear a disconnect warning and it would cut off the AP. Um, you should leave the auto throttle should remain on, uh, the autopilot should be fine. It'll, it'll either disconnect itself or it will just nose up a little bit within a certain tolerance or disconnecting the autopilot it should be fine. Um, but if it does disconnect the AP, that'll be fine because you're already so close to the ground at that point that you're not going to go off the, you're not going to go off the run. Um, that would be my advice is just wait until the last second, pull back the, the stick just a little bit and force it to flare. Um, I'm not sure why it's not. It could be an Asobo thing, uh, but as long as you're otherwise fully configured, you shouldn't have any problems. You're welcome. Absolutely. Also, thank you so much, Barter Barney, for hitting that button. I'm finally getting to you. I told you I would. Uh, no, I know you're just screwing with me, but but yeah, thank you so much for those 20 months of hitting that button. And oh, looks like we oh, that's just a normal unit. I was about to say, 
Did Vipers just place an epic unit? Fantastic. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for hitting that button 20 months in a row. That is damn near two years. One of my oldest, if not my... I think you actually are my oldest subscriber. Um, and this, this plane would be making you all sick right now. Like, look at this. Sobo... So, but what are you doing? This is the whole flight. <laughs> yeah, by like 30 seconds. Yeah, it wasn't by a lot because I think it was uh, Cammy got in right after you. But, uh, I mean, technically, if we're getting very, very specific, I was the first because they automatically grant you one uh, for your own channel. But, uh... <laughs> But yeah, you were you were the first person to, to drop that money on me, and I appreciate that a lot. Uh, and I think that's what yeah, founder got that founder badge for twenty months, and I appreciate that a lot. Uh, that support does not go unnoticed. Um, I'm I'm gonna go to an external view because this is this is making me a little nauseous just watching this. Um. This is something that was in the patch notes saying that they just fixed it. And, uh... They definitely don't seem to have fixed it. This is... Uh, just, just so y'all know, Asobo, this is the opposite of fixed. A plane should not do this. I'm not sure why it is. I feel like I, this would be better for me to hand fly the entire way, but I'm just not gonna do that. That's... That's too much intensity for too too extended of a period of time, and I won't be able to run my stream. Uh, but this is exactly the sort of behavior that a plane should not be. Um, that's your problem. Your plane is labeled anal. It's not anal. It's Anna. It's it's um. Oh, what's it called? Uh, all Nippon Airlines. That is not an L, it's just a stripe. It's just a stripe. Oh, don't do that. To unbind that key. Yeah, this thing is just wallowing like a whale. And it's not ideal. That is not how a plane moves, just so everyone knows. Then, weirdly, so weirdly, um, Sobo sets up your wing views to look kind of like this. Which seems weird because, like, normally you would set up wing views to what a, what a, what a, uh, passenger would see. And while this gets you a nice view of the airplane, it doesn't get you a nice view of the ground and what's going on. So if this happened IRL, would I get fired? Uh, no. Um, because it's not a bad enough oscillation to, to, to actually hurt anything or anyone, and it actually seems to have died down a lot now. Uh, and it could be attributed to wind. Like, if, if I were to allow this to happen IRL, uh, it would have to be because of wind. Um, it would have to be, like, a, like a bad crosswind or really bad um, turbulence to make it get into that oscillation and for me to keep it that way. Um, but if it did happen, assuming that it did, I don't think that I would get fired for it because it's not life-threatening and um, the aviation rules require and and most or, or rather at the very least most airlines require that autopilot remain on over I think it's 10,000 I think it I think that's definitely a law here in the States I'm not sure this motherfucker is trying to flap this thing is not an airplane, it's a bird. Look at this. Look at this, the damn thing is flapping. 
I mean, don't get me wrong, there is there is a lot of wing flex in one of these, and if you get into some turbulence, it will flex the wings really strongly. Like, you'll see probably 15, 20 degrees of deflection. But it's not just flexing, it's rolling. I'm not sure how this would even happen. Um, not for this protracted period of time, and not this high. And I should not be seeing... Like, I could understand this being caused by thermals, but I'm way too high to be getting thermals. I gotta admit, this uh, this livery is not as high quality as I was expecting it. I am getting much better with the cameras. It's not as bad as I thought it was. It kills me that they can get something like that so good. But then, you know, and that's good. But then this this actual artistic part, with the striping and everything, you can see how bad the jaggies are. Like, this is ridiculous. I don't know if they just tried to straight up take a photo and wrap it around the, the hull of the airplane. But this is ridiculous. I wish I would have flown a more popular airline where I would have had a more high quality uh, model. These exits are fine. These are great. Push to open. All that's fine. And this ASX320, my tail number. All that's beautiful. Then, like, the actual livery itself is crappy. And I would have picked a different livery. Kind of looks like it's all drawn with crayon, doesn't it? Okay, it looks like it's maybe calmed down a little. Yeah, that looks a lot better. Man, that oscillation was bad. I it, it specifically is in the patch notes from today's uh, update that they fixed that oscillation, and this is the first time I'm seeing it be that bad, especially for that long of a period of time. Um, so Sobo, uh, whatever you did, maybe maybe you didn't release the right um, hot fix. I don't know what happened because that that was bad. Hopefully it won't keep doing it. You know, maybe you made it better, but it's... I never got to see it be that bad. Because the game was crashing really bad. I mean, um, I did try to fly an MFS on stream maybe three-ish three, three -ish weeks ago. Maybe four. And um, we were flying into Toronto. And uh, <laughs> about 10 nautical miles from the end of the runway... My um, my throttle stopped responding entirely. My stick stops responding. Uh, I still had plenty of fuel and everything, but the plane just went to idle. It wouldn't budge off of it. I cycled on and off the auto throttle, and it wasn't responding to my throttle, uh, my HOTUS. So I don't know what happened, but it just decided to start ignoring all input, and we crashed into the ground about... 
uh, probably three or four miles from the end of the runway, so that is one of those things I would definitely have gotten fired for. Um, unless it was provable that there was something wrong with the aircraft, which I'm hoping that would be the case. Because um, I definitely, I definitely feel like it was not user error um, for my HOTUS to just stop responding like that. And it, and it was responding in menus. It just wasn't responding in the actual simulator. Like the plane was not reacting to it. Uh, and like, to be clear, like these did not move either. So um, I definitely feel like it was not user error. It was something wrong with the system itself um so ideally i wouldn't have gotten fired for that but it depends entirely on whether or not they need somebody's head to roll politically now um i did recently hear i don't know if anybody here uh follows some of the more popular uh aviation youtube channels uh, I follow one called 74 Gear. Uh, the guy is an, is an actual 747 pilot. And um, he told a story about a Texas 250. Now, that, that may not make sense to a lot of people if you're not into AV. But so, at least in the United States and in most of the world, there's a uh, flight restriction of under 10,000 feet have to be at or below 250 knots. And... Um, so he tells a story about how he was flying on this airline in a jump seat. Uh, he, he wasn't actually a pilot, but he was just being moved from location to location. So he's not part of the flight crew, but he is riding in the cockpit on the jump seat, which if it's actually modeled, there's a jump seat. Uh, I think there might be another one here, but I'd have to get a better angle. Um, but yeah, so he was basically like riding right there in between the two pilots. And um, so the pilot is approaching 10,000 feet, but they're still going about 280 knots. And he's just like, mm, I don't want to say anything because I don't want to, you know, um, I don't want to disrupt their, their crew resource management. So they get to 10,000 feet. And the guy's still going 280, so the guy says, hey, um, speed? And so the pilot turns around and says, don't you worry, this is a Texas 250. So he's coming down, still doing 280 knots. And ATC calls. And he tells his co-pilot, he says, hold on, I'll take this. So... Uh, he, he keys the mic and, and, and answers them, and, and ATC asks uh, how fast he's going. And he says, uh, well, my, my indicator says I'm going about 250, but I think we've got a little bit of a tail gust that's about to, it seems like it's about to level off. And then he pulls the power, throws in the, uh, throws in the speed brake, gets it down to actually 250, and convinces him it was all just a tailwind. <laughs> And uh, you can't do that anymore. Like now the, the so when I put my transponder, I, I called it mode C, uh, where it's reporting, it, 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 it's reporting not just where you are, right? But it's also reporting your altitude, your airspeed, like it, it's, it's sending a bunch of data telemetry from the plane to the ground. So now, You'd say that and it'd be like, well, we're showing from your transponder that you're going 280. Wouldn't work anymore, but back then, get away with that. I think that was, what, Delta? I'm not sure. It was it was a popular Texan, um, Texan airline. But he didn't he didn't say who it was, but I'm kind of guessing maybe Delta. Because they are uh, known a little bit for, uh, shall we say, speed deviations. Oh dear God. This again? Come on. Microsoft. Asobo, please. Please fix. Please fix. 
should not be oscillating this bad at cruise. I gotta, I gotta get out of the cockpit. <laughs> Seeing everything, including the lighting rock like that, was just, ooh, was not working. Now some of this up and down oscillation that we're doing, that's, that's probably pretty accurate. Uh, especially if you have fluctuating wind. Which I think we do. Cockpit. That. Ooh, 122 knot tailwind. And it's, it's dropping really fast and gusting. Yeah. I don't think that the wind should probably gust that much at this altitude, but I'm not an aviator, so I'm not entirely sure. Ooh, Epic Archer. Fantastic. Thank you so much. By the way, thank you so much for popping by Queen and what's it? Eight, I think. Hard for me to read. It's a very small window. <laughs> but thank you so much, guys, for participating, and uh, hopefully we can get you some rewards. I will be trying to start fights immediately when they're ready. I was doing the nighttime show, so I was out for most of this placement phase. Had to buck up the numbers. Fair enough. Ah, uh, yes. Bits for free, if if it ever were. Uh, sadly, Twitch has been becoming more and more abusive with ads. Uh, let me know if you guys are getting, you know, heavily assaulted with ads. Um, I can take a break and force it to stop with the goddamn ads for a little bit. Um, they're also doing some... can't really blame them for what they're doing. But like, uh... So one of the things that they've decided is if you use an ad blocker that's capable of blocking Twitch ads, it'll automatically reduce your, uh, the video quality down to 480p. And I can't really blame them for that. Um, you know, if they're, if they're relying on an ad revenue based monetization and you're blocking the ads, there's not a lot that they can, they've got to punish it somehow. Um, so that I don't, I, I, I can't really fault them for that. I can fault them for how many ads they're trying to, like, it's, it's rough. They're, they're, they're trying to throw way too many. nearby uh, things will be come on hey thank you so much egg 10 sheep 138 plays that epic centurion and vipers gx7 for dropping an epic mate i appreciate that a whole heckin lot Hopefully we'll get you guys some good rewards. Just so you know, I do always tell it to select randomly. I don't, I, I don't play favorites with who I disseminate loot to. Uh, I also try to maximize how many coins you guys get. Uh, I definitely don't do not need to be greedy about it. So uh, I try to pass on absolutely as much as I can to you guys, and I try to distribute as fairly as I can. 
just by allowing the computer to handle it all. Um, that's kind of the, the, the philosophy that I use with Stream Raiders. I want to be as fair as possible and get everybody as good a, as good a loot I possibly can. Alright, so... Are are we from like top? Ooh, we are not far away. Where's top of descent? I don't see top of descent. Okay, well. Hmm. Okay, so if we're gonna need to drop. 33,000 feet. That's going to be... 99 miles? If this is at about... me, so we need to drop... Probably right about here. Give it a, like, five minutes after Kydak. And then we'll start descending. In fact, there's going to be a little bit of a weird landing. Plus, this has been a lot shorter flight than I expected it to be. <laughs> I expected it to take about two hours. But uh, we have a nice chunky tailwind that is uh, boosting our ground speed quite a bit. Our ground speed's 579 knots. Uh, that's probably a good 20% faster than I was expecting to be moving. <laughs> no winds to We will be able to put this in when the time comes. Go ahead and start putting that in. Uh, zero, one, E. Temperature is what? Three. Weather. 15. Sorry. Our winds are down level. Oh boy. I'm going to put in zero at zero, but. His altitude is going to be like level one. Thousand feet. Make sure that it doesn't think 140 feet. Vision height, I'm going to put 200. All right, so flap retraction, flats, and what? I think it's got it backwards. Approach. I think that's the. Uh... I don't know. Yeah, that's actually the the ascent phase.
wait just a couple more minutes. No, I'm not. I'm gonna go ahead and go down to 2,000. There goes our descent. Real quick, look at. Okay, so at Adam, I need to get down to 2,000 feet. We're gonna increase this. I need to add him. Doesn't have a restriction. So we're going to be coming in for. Or left. Bring in ILS X ray. We're okay. We're coming in X ray. Perfect. Okay, so here approach plates. It Avion Thousand. Okay. I hoe at 4,000, Alley at uh, Avion at 2,000, then we'll catch the uh, glide slope at. So that I can see that here, so I can keep this uh, approach plate up on my screen. Eighty knots at Kaiho, one sixty alley. And my frame rates dying. They do not. Ooh, 100% CP. What is going on? Oh, OBS is, is chonking hard. After. Reevaluate my S. 
Oi, Vizi, or welcome, oi. We need to, I can pull out more speed break, but like Kaiho, we need to be. Uh, 189. Then by alley, we need to be at one. Once we hit that D cell, I'm gonna have to drop our uh, speed manually instead of remaining in. They need to be at 2,000. Oh. 4,000. Ah, uh, Kaiho's at 4,000. Ali. For me. Uh, Avion. 1,000. Everything's okay. I think I'm going to try and do real quick just to test. I'm going to off the back. We're going to see if things improve. Well, I don't know. I might be lying. Be fairly significant. I think it dropped about 20%. Not using it in the background. So I'm going to leave that off here for the moment until I find a way to uh, optimize it a little more. Uh, meanwhile, we're going to continue our descent. We're going to have a pretty wicked crosswind. Can't say for sure. Okay, so once we hit this D cell, I'm going to selected airspeed mode. Are we in mock? Oh, uh, this still doesn't want to switch back and forth. Oh god. Oh, come on. All right. Microsoft, guys. You guys got to fix this stuff because this is not okay. Extend flaps one. Lights can come on.
Yeah, I feel like we wouldn't get down this this speed this fast. Um, this is where I, I I think that Microsoft's models are very very incorrect because this is not how an Airbus flies. This is decelerating way too fast. Flaps two. Four thousand by cut. Arm the speed brakes. It looks like it'll be right after we land, we'll have the opportunity to run a, uh, a stream raiders. Troublesome. And this mis Two thousand. Get the LS. to overspeed you don't chill the fuck out definitely still in violation as to our speed they have to just kill the auto throw Oh. Now we're under 160 knots. Be able to go manage mode. Just mode that shouldn't kill anything it's it has done it in the past shouldn't do it now Drop gear. Arm the brake. Auto brakes to him. Lights on. There's our runway over there to the left. Oh. 
<clears throat> Alright, so we should be fully config. Onto rudder pedals. Got a decent uh, uh, crosswind from the right. Here we go. All right, not half bad. Uh, my frame rate just went to shit. So, uh, not sure that I did all that well. But here we are, ladies and gentlemen, at Haneda Airport in Tokyo, Japan. And it actually does not look half bad. Um, apparently, one thing Asobo is good at, regardless of how bad they are at autopilot, and physics and chip system, that sort of thing. Uh, one thing they are really good at is how this shit looks. Yeah, well, it wasn't supposed to be. <laughs> like, it's, it's, this was an hour and 45 minute flight. And, you know, with, um, with about 15, 20 minutes for me to set the plane up and get started, that's about right. Now, the problem is, one that I have no idea where I'm actually parking. Uh, probably right over here. It actually looks like a great place to park. Um, problem is, we had a 150 knot tailwind. So, we were moving a good 150 knots faster than we should have been. Our ground speed should have been somewhere around 350 knots. We were getting somewhere closer to like 450, 500. That's, that's a pretty significant difference.
Turn some of these off. Really shouldn't be on where we're at. The parking brake. All right, so I think that that should do us. Let's make sure that we're where we need to be before we start cutting engines. Nope. Okay. So that's... So there is... Add to that external. Sir. Perfect. Perfect! Okay. Let's get this bad boy shut down, shall we? Let's see. Make sure we do our rollout. Landing lights, retracted ground spoilers, disarmed. Perfect. Engine mode, normal. Uh, flaps retracted. APU master and start. Rain on ND off. Brake fan on if necessary. We don't even have a brake fan on. Yeah, we don't even have a brake fan on here. Oh well. Okay, parking, park brake, check green. Park brake on. Anti ice not needed. APU bleed on. As it becomes available, it will take on. Uh, and then engine one and two master. Once this turns green, we will turn off our engines. Uh, okay, that's green. So let's turn off our engines. Engine one and engine two. Pull down. Runway, turn off lights are off. Wing lights, nose wheel lights. We can just basically turn off all our lights. Probe off. Off. Belts and what have you. Estimated time, or elapsed time stop. Fuel pumps off. We'll go ahead and shut this thing down before we start our fight. This will be our last fight of the transponder to standby. Pick dues dim, I'm not gonna worry about that. Park brake fan off. Bring the aircraft. Gears off, which are in up. Uh, exterior lights all off. APU master off. APU bleed off. No smoking, all that is an op. Battery one. Perfect. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Haneda. Let's get our fight started. We gotta kill some pixels before we sign off for the night. Uh I forgot to All right, perfect, and that looks fine. Uh, we're at Cyber GX7 got three for sure. All right, thank you guys so much for being here. We will be back here tomorrow playing Mega Man X3. Should be right at the end of it, and then we will be rolling into Mega Man X4, which I have never played before. Uh, I have never played that one. I am very much looking forward to it. However, for the time being, uh, thank you guys for being here, and I'm sorry that we didn't get the last 15 or so minutes of our flight, uh, but hey, that's what happens when we have a heckin' tailwind like that, is we show up a little early. Oh, and it looks like it did uh, actually connect the jetway, did it? No, it didn't. Let's take a look here and see if they'll go off. Well, with our radios off, it's not going to connect the jetway, but that's fine. That's fine. We got to look here at the absolutely gorgeous Tokyo Haneda Airport. It really does look fantastic. They did a lot of work on it. 
can tell. And it looks gorgeous. But, unfortunately, that's the show today. I have to let you guys go. I appreciate so much you guys being here. And, uh, hope to see you again tomorrow. My name is Iraq Attack, and you can also find me on uh, YouTube. Just search for Iraq Attack. I'm not going to throw a link because the link is ugly as hell until I get um, all my subscribers. Uh, it, once I get a thousand subscribers, I'll be able to, to get a custom URL to where I won't have the super dumb looking uh, link. But until then, I'm stuck just saying, hey, search for Iraq Attack, A R A K A T K, um, on YouTube. I'm also on Instagram. Uh, Facebook. Uh, I'm everywhere. I don't do a whole lot socially yet. I am working on it. I do have some content coming for you guys there. Uh, you'll definitely be able to see my past streams, my, my past flight streams, and I will be uploading my retro games uh, as well coming soon. PM, please. Thank you guys for coming, and I will see you guys tomorrow. Have a fantastic night, y'all.